Good evening, meteorologist Bob Acarfrio with today's tropical update for Friday, September 2nd, 2011. We're watching two systems out there today. Um, first system here is Hurricane Katia. Back to a hurricane today, although barely hanging on to that hurricane strand. Still um, a lot of southwesterly shear affecting her today. Um, as, of, as of the 5 p.m. advisory by National Hurricane Center, we have maximum sustained winds at 75 moving to the northwest at 12. And you can see the forecast track over the next five days. It's basically going to be on a west-northwest to northwest track. More northwest through the weekend. Then we might bend back to the west-northwest here as our one trough lifts out. And then this is where the forecast becomes a little more cloudier in the extended period as we go through the end of next week. Um, as I've been saying all along, this was going to come between Bermuda and the United States, and that looks like that's what's going to happen. Um, and the extended, how far, how close does it get to the United States? Still a little concern for eastern New England and definitely Canada with Cadia. Mid-Atlantic should stay far enough east. I say should. Could have a little interaction with Tropical Storm or maybe Hurricane Lee down the road. And I'll show you why that could happen as well. So... And that interaction could bring her a little closer to the coast. So still a lot of ifs in the forecast uh, beyond the five-day period, and that's okay. Um, still a watch. No worry for the United States right now. We just want to watch it. Um, oh, by the way, this isn't coming to Florida. I've, there was some talk, um, especially on some of the Weather Underground blogs, this was going to be the next Andrew. No, it's not going to make this left turn and head to Florida. That's not going to happen. But... Again, my concern would be farther up the East Coast of the United States, especially for Eastern New England and then again Canada. All right, next up we have Tropical Storm Lee, was named Lee today. Maximum sustained winds right now 45 miles an hour as of the uh, 4 p.m. 5, 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time advisory. Basically stationary movement right now. And again, the official forecast track through the Labor Day weekend, very slow movement to the north. And then eventually we're going to lift this up to the north-northeast. Slow mover. Um, definitely, as I mentioned, remember with Irene, how many times did I tell you guys, it's going to be a big flooding event. Going to be a big flooding event. Uh, this one's going to be a big flooding event as well. Good news is this area does need the rainfall. We're in a pretty big drought here across the south. So um, we haven't had a lot of rain before Lee, so it's going to take a lot really to get that ground saturated in the beginning. But um, this definitely could be a big, big flooding event, beach erosion, some minor, minor coastal flooding. Again, depending on how strong Lee gets, and I'll show you some of the variables with Lee in a moment here. Unfortunately, Texas, this isn't going to be your storm. Um, okay, uh, Cadia today. Here's the uh, current uh, satellite loop, and you can see. Still a sheared system. You can see how it's, we're stretched out here if you look at the clouds. And this is that southwest shear. Um, we've seen convection flare up, go down, flare up, go down. And uh, again, the southwesterly shear is still with it. And until that shear goes away, um, we're not going to see Cadia strengthen too much. Here is the visible shot of Lee. And you can see Lee almost looks a little bit like a subtropical system, although it's not. This does have origins from the tropics, so it's definitely a tropical system. But it's kind of tangled up with this upper level low here across, um, you know, just near Houston area here, across uh, eastern Texas. So it's a little entangled with this upper level low, and that's why you get this appearance of most of the convection on the east and north side here. It's not getting all the way around. The center's down in here. Um, so it's not wrapping all the way around here. As long as this upper level low is nearby, this system is not going to strengthen quickly. Uh, that's the good news. If this upper level low weakens, it's supposed to move a little little farther west and get away from, from Lee, Lee could actually ramp up and could become close to hurricane strength as it makes landfall in eastern Louisiana here. Again, not expecting a huge hurricane by no means. And again, rainfall is going to be the biggest threat than the winds. But any little increase in winds here could, and with that rainfall, could take down trees, could take down power lines, power outages. So there's a little concern for that with Lee as well. But I, this isn't going to be no Category 2 or 3 hurricane by no means. Um, again, maybe a minimal hurricane. I'm looking at 60, 65 mile per hour peak 
possibly tropical storm, but there is that chance it could become a minimal hurricane if this upper level low gets added away because the shear is rather light um, in the Gulf here. So again, saving grace is this upper low. A uh, wider picture, here's Lee, and you can see, um, almost looks like a shrimp here. Not much on the western side, nothing in Texas, unfortunately. Um, here's Cotia, and you can see that southwesterly shear just like this, spreading right over Cotia right now. And here's our little trough here that's uh, influencing Cotia to go north of the islands. But again, this trough's going to lift out, and then what happens? We have to wait for the next trough, maybe interaction with Lee. We'll see where Katia goes. Water vapor loop. Now, another um, thing why well, I don't think Katia is really going to get very strong, um, definitely taking major hurricane off the table, is that, um, yeah, the shear may weaken a little bit in this area, but boy, look at all this dry air just piling down. Uh, those of you um, here in northeast Florida can attest how dry it was today. Just a beautiful day for uh, beginning of September here across Northeast Florida. Drier air, lower dew points, mid to upper 80s. I mean, just incredible. And this dry air is really going to affect the uh, Cadia as it gets into this area here. So even though shear might lessen, uh, this dry air is going to be hurting it as well. So I don't see Cadia possibly close to a Category 2. I doubt it. I think we're going to see Category 1 throughout uh, Katia's life lifespan here. Radar. Well, we can see rain piling up already here across um, eastern Louisiana, New Orleans, um, down to Lafayette here, uh, most of the eastern and to the central coast here of Louisiana. Coming in close to the Mobile area here, some rain bands, and across southern Mississippi. Also going to have to watch for tornadoes with this system, especially as the system moves farther north, especially on the eastern and northeastern side. So basically probably from New Orleans to Mobile um, and maybe even the Western Panhandle getting into the into the uh, especially extreme Western Panhandle Pensacola area watch for some of these small tornadoes spinning up um, with this system so that's something to watch for for the next couple days as well rainfall um, this is our uh, HPC this is five day precipitation progs this is what the models are saying um, from um, today through Wednesday, and you can see 17-inch bullseye here, all the way through the Tennessee Valley as well, um, western North Carolina. So this whole area is going to see a lot of rainfall and the potential for some flooding rainfall. Florida, you might get some here by, by about Labor Day Tuesday as well. Might get some rainfall here spreading off the Gulf as well as, as Lee comes northeast here. But this is really going to be the big area here especially from New Orleans to Mobile, Pensacola. Big rains. Um, shear again. Here's Cadia shear. You know, we're in that 20, 20 to 25 knots of shear over Cadia. Again, not much shear with Lee. Thank God for that upper low. <laughs> that upper low is the saving grace from this really strengthening quickly here in the Gulf. Um, this is the... Uh, this is the steering layers uh, currents for Cadia right now and you can see here's that trough here near Bermuda this trough's gonna lift out a bit that's why we could see uh, Cadia come back to the west northwest and then we're gonna wait as this high pressure weakens a bit there'll be another trough coming down here and that's eventually gonna bring Lee up to the north northeast and that hopefully will take Cadia out to sea but again, a lot of ifs up in this area with Cadia in the extended, especially, and that's again about seven days out. So we still have a lot of ifs there. And again, Lee steering current, Lee being blocked by high pressure now. And that high pressure nosed all the way into Texas, which blocked Lee for, from coming west, keeping them dry, unfortunately. This high pressure will eventually weaken and let Lee come on in and then eventually off to the northeast. Models, here's for Lee. Again, pretty much we're all bunched up with that slow movement towards New Orleans. And then again, slowly off to the north-northeast uh, through early next week. Uh, let's get Katia's models here real quick. Here's Katia. And again, blue line is the UK, UK Met, which is really an outlier right now. We could just cross this off. But I mean, here is no gaps and Canadian. Here's the consensus right in here. And these are a lot of the GFS ensemble models. So again, just going to have to watch. K 
can Lee induce her to come a little closer to the coast? So this is the area. My concern really for this would be eastern New England and especially Canada. So right in this area here. Okay, models here. We got Euro model. We'll go through this quickly. I know I'm running a little long here. So we have Euro. And here comes Euro. Euro makes a quick right turn here. Right out to sea. Keeps Lee rather weak into the west as well. A little farther west with Lee. So Lee doesn't have much of an influence on this track. And then there it goes. Makes that right turn out to sea as it gets entangled in this trough up here. Um, if you look at the GFS, we're going to put this into motion. Keeps Lee a little stronger and a little farther east. And that could have a little induction in getting her a little closer to the coast here. You can see how close it comes to eastern New England and then through Canada here. So really going to have to watch what Lee does. And if Lee stays a little farther to the east and is a little stronger here, it could swing Katia a little farther towards the coast. So we're going to watch that interaction that could happen. Um, UK Met, this was that western outlier here. Again, just takes this trough out really quickly and builds high pressure in. Can't really see that happening right now. Uh, GFDL track on Cadia. Um, again, here's, that, here's where that if comes in, right in this area here. Does it swing out? Does it come a little closer? And HWRF the next five days again. This is where we'll see what will happen with Cadia. And there goes Lee and... What is, what's going to be the interaction between both of them? It should be pretty interesting to see. And again, intensity models for Lee. Uh, this is the latest intensity models. And they're all, again, bunched in that 50 to 60 knot range. Kind of where I'm at too, especially if that upper low hangs with it. Again, there is that outside chance of a minimal hurricane at landfall. But again, the main, main, main threat to Lee is going to be flooding rain. And again, watch for some tornadoes spinning up too, especially on the... Well, we'll probably see a tornado watch somewhere um, probably by tomorrow. And uh, we'll have to watch for quick uh, spinning up tornadoes. Again, power lines down, trees down, especially with some gusty winds. You know, if winds gust 50, 60 miles an hour, a saturated ground could see uh, numerous power outages as well. Well, that's it for my tropical update today. I will try to have another one tomorrow morning for you guys and keep you updated throughout the Labor Day weekend. You can follow me on Facebook. It's Robert A C A N F R I O. And you could view my weather blog at weatherunderground.com. Have a good day.